Hey guys, whoa, crazy here. Good morning, good afternoon. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Um, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kayleen and I'll be your host. Uh, I am very thankful to all of you. Thank you so much uh, to all my new subscribers. I've had a few new subscribers lately. Um, and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I am the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn and Little Bean Crochet on Etsy. And as always, I'll put the information on the screen. Down below, there are always timestamps and the links to relevant information um, that I share in the podcast. So if I'm ever mentioning a pattern or another yarn dyer or my own hand dyed yarn, you can always check down below and see the, the links for everything. So welcome, welcome back to everyone. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful week again and I hope you have fun plans for this weekend. Um, it is after Halloween. Yay! And that's all that madness is finished. Uh, we had a lovely time trick-or-treating with some friends. My daughter has some child friends that we have playdates with and um, some of my close mom friends and we went trick-or-treating in one of their neighborhoods and they all had fun. Tucker was a little bit on the, on the fence about it. It was very close to his bedtime but Cecilia really had fun. So let's just get into everything. It's been a busy week. It was a busy week last week. I spent some time <clears throat> knitting and crocheting. I have a couple of finished objects and a work in progress to talk about as well as some dyeing that I've done this week. At the end of the episode I'll do a shop update so if you're looking for that information it'll be closer to the end of the episode but let's just get into it. Uh, let's get into some finished objects. I have a couple of things that I had finished last week and I didn't have a chance to talk about in full. So the first things that you'll see behind me are these socks. It's my second pair of socks. So I worked on these. Uh, they're a little fuzzy. Cece did wear them last week. But I knit these up. These are on my Lux DK base in the We're All Mad Here colorway. And you can see one is a little lighter than the other. It's just how the dye took on the skein. But I did these cuff down two at a time, fish lips kiss heel, I did a standard, you know, toe decrease, it's not super, it's a bit rounded I suppose, there we go, so I just did a standard toe decrease, every other row is decreased, and then I did a kitchener stitch on the toe that I did the right way this time, which I wanted to share, so again, these are a bit fuzzy because she wore them this week, they have to get washed, and it's cashmere, so cashmere is fuzzy. But as you can see here, I successfully kitchenered this toe and the other toe. So it actually looks the way it's supposed to look. I wasn't entirely sure I had done it right last time because I, again, had like holes in it. It didn't quite look the way I thought it was going to look. So I'll show you the other toe here. So you can see the kitchener stitch right there across the toe. And I, I think I did a pretty good job. It's so fuzzy of matching the um, the gauge of the knitting. So it actually looks pretty seamless and it feels seamless on the inside, which is nice. So I feel so proud of myself for these. So I haven't cast on another pair. I know when you cast off a pair of socks, you're supposed to cast another pair on, but I didn't, not yet, I will. But those are done and worn and need to be washed. I mean, she's not that hard on her socks. She doesn't sweat or anything, it's just, just she wears them and puts them in the, the laundry. So then the other finished object that I have, I showed last week, and I'll put a picture here of the completed costume. Cecilia went as a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween, and I did this crochet hat. Again, just not from a pattern. It has these cool tendrils. It's done in half double crochet from the brim up. I did some decreases starting in this row, going up, Every other row I think I did a decrease to make this tapered hat. And the way it sat on her head was really cute. You know, it sat kind of off her head so these would dangle in the back. She loved it. And then I made her a set of gloves. My son stole the other one, but these are just hand warmers. Here we go. So these were just done in the same yarn, done in linen stitch. I did just a short, they're pretty much hand warmers. For her and they were pretty oversized and big so you'll see in the photo that I put up uh, they're very 
large. And then I made this with the remainder of the yarn, which is enough. I wore it as a headband. I brought it as a secondary ear warmer for Tucker because his head is huge and of course this fits him as well. But this is just a headband that I made. Um, very warm and cozy, very stretchy. My hair is crazy today. Um, on the outside. So this was done in half double crochet, of course, because this is my favorite crochet stitch. And in the round, in a continuous loop, so there's not a seam or an obvious seam. You can see down here where the row, this was the beginning. Yes, so this was the beginning, the bottom, and it went up. I didn't care about the seam or, or making it look hidden or anything, but... So it was done continuously in the round, and you can see here where I ended. So the, the end and the beginning are both in the back. And then this is the front, and it looks knit. It looks stockinette, which is really cool, but it's actually crochet because all my crochet things need to look and feel like knit. Uh, but then on the reverse side, which is actually quite nice, is this lovely bobbly stitch. It looks a bit like a moss stitch. Uh, also very stretchy and I think this headband looks good either way uh, whether you have the knit part on the outside or you have this lovely mossy pattern on the outside I think it looks nice either way and I'm more of a headband person mostly because I always wear my hair up in a bun so I was happy to make this it's warm it's an acrylic wool blend it's not anything fancy it wasn't my own yarn it was just a Lion Brand Woolies Tonal. So it's a chunky yarn and it was very easy and very, very, very fast, which is how I always stitch things. So then that brings us to a work in progress. Um, this work in progress is a baby blanket and this is going to be gifted. So I don't know if Amy watches this. So Amy, please fast forward a little bit if you're watching this maybe a minute or two um, I'll try and put a timestamp below when I stop talking about it but it's a gift for you so I don't want you to see it so my friend Amy is pregnant and she's having a baby and so I started crocheting a baby blanket for her this is done in my hand dyed yarn this is the yarn that I just custom dyed yesterday and it's in my simple DK base which is a superwash wool 100% superwash merino and single ply and I'm just doing a simple linen stitch blanket on a corner to corner style. And I am almost through the first skein of yarn. I only have a little bit left. And I don't have a name for this colorway yet because <laughs> I just wanted a nice subtle peachy toned yarn for this blanket. It's coming out. This is more accurate to color right here. Um, I just wanted a nice peachy tone blanket for her, for her baby. I'm thinking about naming it like, I don't know, something about Princess Peach, but it's a lovely, um, just a tonal yarn. Like, I, it's not variegated because there's not multiple, well, I guess there are multiple colors in here, but it's not obvious. It looks just like a peach tonal, very, very faint peach. So I am working on that. I started that this morning. I'll probably finish it later tonight. So uh, you may not see a picture here on the podcast or see it on the podcast, but I definitely will put it up on my Instagram. So if you're interested to see this project finish, check out my Instagram. I will post it when it's done. But I like making baby blankets. Um, I really enjoyed making my daughter's baby blanket, which I'll show you here. She, this is her blankie. This goes with her everywhere except school. And this is one that I made for her while I was pregnant. And this is in just a shell stitch. This was made in acrylic. This is just Karen uh, Simply Soft or something soft. I don't remember the name. Um, I think it's Karen Simply Soft. But I just did a basic shell pattern, as you can see. And these are in double crochet, which isn't my favorite stitch, but I wanted to do something I could work on the train. I used to commute into Boston for work. So I would sit on the train and crochet on this. This took me maybe a week or two to finish, just doing a little bit every single day. And then right before she was born, I put the border on pink at, in the hopes <laughs> that she would be born shortly after and she was born two days after I finished this blanket. So 
that is her blankie and this is an old finished object I mean this blanket goes with her everywhere I still need to make Tucker a blanket I don't know if I'll make it out of this material I'm not a super fan of acrylics I don't know if you can tell but I don't really like stitching with them Cece loves this blanket and it's not I mean it's warm enough but it's not as warm as wool and I wish it was a little warmer but I mean the thing with this yarn is that it will stand the test of time so it takes a lot to rip this yarn apart it has to actually be like physically cut so unless she drags it across a nail or something really sharp it's not going to get damaged so mm. what am I drinking I'm drinking um, this is from the atomic cafe this is my favorite cafe to go to in town they have the one the best coffee that I've had around here and they also have the best egg sandwiches <laughs> uh, breakfast their breakfast items are very delicious so yes it's November yes I'm drinking iced coffee I'm from New England I don't stop drinking iced coffee maybe till February so and that's only for like a month and then I start drinking iced coffee again <laughs> uh, when I'm home it's funny I, I drink hot coffee but then when I go out I always get iced coffee I don't know why I just prefer it okay so let's get on to dyeing I've done a lot of dyeing this week uh, I had several custom orders come in and I got my new vase well not my new base I got my simple sock base back in and I hadn't dyed on it yet I just finished organizing my yarn room which is also our guest room and our ellipticals in that room it, there's a lot of things in that room um, but it's where I organize my my whole yarn stash including the yarn that I'm going to dye and so I d dyed up a bunch of yarn which I have right here and I'll just show you in just a second okay so I'll show you this yarn that I dyed up. I have yarn on several bases, but I'm just going to talk about the colors and kind of what I was dyeing. So this I'll show you first. Oh, the light changed. I'm sorry about that. The sun must have gone in. So this is the peach yarn that I was just showing you uh, on my Simple DK base. Oh, it changed again. <laughs> the sun came back out. <laughs> Sorry about that, I use natural light ink when I'm filming. So this is that peach color. I might have this in the shop, I don't know. It depends how much of this I used. I dyed four skeins for the blanket, but I might only use three. So we'll see. Uh, but this is a really pretty color. I'm thinking I'm gonna put it in as a repeatable colorway. It's just a very soft, neutral peach. And I like it, and it makes me wanna like, just hug and squish the yarn all day long. So, I dyed a lot. <laughs> so let's start with this color. So this is Fox Rising, and I haven't dyed this color in a long time. I dyed two skeins of this when I was experimenting to make this a repeatable colorway. And I hadn't settled on a formula for how I wanted to dye it, and I got an order for the last skein of fox rising that I had in shop and so I thought of it as a nice opportunity to just dye up on the simple sock base because I love this base um dye up this colorway again because I wanted to try and replicate it and finalize my formula so that's exactly what I did with this so this is fox rising and it is fiery deep reds orange yellow it's a variegated skein and it's dyed randomly so Again, most of my yarns I always recommend to um, alternate your skeins if you're going to stitch with this. Multiple skeins in one project. So, here it is. It's very fiery. There we go. Yeah. It's a beautiful, fiery color. And I love this base. Like, I'm not a fan of fingering weight. I love DK weight yarn and worsted weight yarn. But it's mostly because I, I'm a crocheter, so I'm always working in that medium. But I love single ply, and I love single ply um, fingering weight. Fingering weight yarn, that's what I was going to say. So that's Fox Rising, and that's why I dyed it up. I also did an Anarchy color. This is the last one I have up. It's already in the shop, but this is the restricted section. 
it was one it was almost like a kitchen sink dye different colors that I had available to me that I had some stock left over and I was like oh this would make a really pretty colorway I didn't take notes so this is it this is the last game but I thought it was really fun to dye up it's purples and grays and golds and just all sorts of lovely colors in there and then another that I dyed up on the Simple Sock base was this. This is I called Slytherin Common Room. So the Slytherin Common Room is located, I believe it's in the dungeons, under the Black Lake. So there's always this blue-green tint in the Common Room. So it's just a variegated skein, again, randomly variegated. But it's beautiful. It came out really beautifully. Um, and then another one that I dyed on my simple base was this one, and I wanted to use more peach. I really like peach, the color, because uh, it's nice and warm, but I called this one Molly Weasley. So another peach variegated skein. This was really fun to dye. I think it was only three colors. It's three colors in this, but everything blends together and, you know, creates new colors and deeper shades of the same color. So it's really fun to see when you put the dye in the, the, the pot and then get your yarn out and it's this beautiful surprise. So then I decided to dye up some stuff, like re-dye another old colorway. So I was dyeing up Fox Rising and I wanted to dye another old colorway that I hadn't dyed in a while. So I dyed up some Harbor Storm. This came out very much more saturated than my original um, formula. Even though I pretty well follow the same formula, I think it's because I used a different pot. The yarn had more room to um, move around. So here it is. This is Harbor Storm. So this has really bold aqua and some navy. And it's coming a little blown out on the screen because of the lighting. The tone is true, but it's looking a bit brighter. Than it is in person it has much more depth like this is much darker in real life so yeah so that's that and then with the leftover dye from that i thought i would do a one a one time only colorway so i dyed this and i called this overcast so with the dye that was left over in the bath uh, because that was so incredibly saturated there was like the slightest tint left to the dye water so I thought, why not make, you know, a nice light blue-gray color. And so I used the leftover dye, because waste not want not, and I added in this, um, some gray into the mix. And I called this overcast. And so I posted it up on Instagram saying, like, Saturday there'll be a shop update. And I had a lot of positive response to this colorway, so I tried to repeat it. Uh, I didn't, obviously this was made with leftover dye from this, so there's a bit more of an aqua, like a greener tint to this than there is to this. So this is the original dye up of it, and then this is my recreation of it. So you can see it's a little more red toned on top and a little more green tone on bottom but I think I did a good job of representing the general feel of the color so I'm going to include these both in my shop update but this will be the repeatable colorway which is the one that I I tried to recreate um, so this is overcast that will be available from here on out and then this was my first dye of it which was from with the leftover dye and so I did it also in my simple DK base so this is overcast. So yeah, I had a very busy week dyeing. I dyed up that stuff for the blanket. I dyed up these. I dyed up some old colorways, new colorways, one of a kind colorways. <laughs> but I felt very inspired to dye because I, I've been missing my simple sock base. So anyway, so that's everything that I have for you for you know, the things I've been working on this week. I did want to touch on a topic. I had a person ask me a question on Instagram this week. She asked me um, what the difference is between all of my yarn bases are. So I thought I would 
touch on that with you here. So if you're interested in hearing about the different yarn bases that I talk about and you know what the differences are, then you know you stay where you are. If you're not interested in hearing that or about the shop update, then I'll see you next week. Okay, so I went and I grabbed my yarn bases. So I'm going to go over all of the bases that I carry in my shop and I want to tell you a little bit about them, a little of their characteristics. Um, I know sometimes if you're searching through Etsy or other online indie dyers, that everybody names their bases differently. Um, there are several places where we all source our bases from, so they're going to be similar, similar feeling, having similar fiber content. Wow, the light is changing so bad. <laughs> um, Sorry about the light changes, but again, daylight, there are clouds, and the sun keeps coming in and out. Oh, and it's bright again. It's bright again. Anyway, so we name our bases different things, you know, based on our brand. You know, some um, name them like in certain categories, like Leading Men Fiber Arts has a lot of drama, you know, so it's like their showstopper base. And other bases that are like dealing with like acting or drama, and then I think is it molly girl fibers she has like a hard rock sock and acoustic sock and you know it's all about like music so even though we name our yarns differently they all some of them are very similar or the same type of base or the same kind of fiber content so i just wanted to go over you know from bottom to top from the least expensive base that i offer through the most expensive base that I offer, not counting sock blanks because sock blanks are made of my everyday sock, which is a four ply 7525. But because it's a pre knit blank, it's more expensive for me to acquire, which means it's more expensive for you to purchase. Um, and also, depending on the dye technique, if I'm doing stenciling or painting or something that's really hand intensive where I'm doing it physically on the blank. That would push the price up a little bit because of my own labor excuse me so i wanted to go over all of the bases and then i'll show you characteristics of the bases as well so we're going to start with the simple set so simple dk and simple sock these are my 100 100 superwash merino bases they are both single ply which is why they're both named simple dk and simple sock so this is Simple DK. This is the yarn that I showed you that I just dyed. Now these simple bases bloom. When they are dyed, like soaked, dyed, and dried, you can see that they bloom. So even though it's a DK weight yarn, it puffs up more after it's dyed and it becomes much more fluffy. So you can see the difference between this undyed skein and this dyed skein. They're twisted the same way but you can see that the bottom skein is much airier and fluffier than the top skein. So that's what it looks like after it's been dyed and dried. This is Simple DK. And then the same thing with Simple Sock. It's a little more dramatic with Simple Sock because of the, the weight of the yarn. So this is a fingering weight yarn. And then after it is dyed and dried, this is what it looks like. So you can see that the fiber puffs up and becomes much fluffier, much more squishy, a lot less floppy. So this is undyed, and this was just dyed this week. Same, same yarn, same skeins, twisted the same way, but you can see that the yarn fluffs up, or blooms, we call that blooming. These are both 100% Superwash Merino. They are not a high twist, so these, are not suitable for socks or garments that have hard wear. So if you're looking to make, you know, socks with this, you are probably going to have it get worn out very quickly because merino is very soft and not being a high twist fiber, the twist adds more strength. This would not be suitable, but this is good for, you know, light wearing cardigans or shawls or scarves or even hats to for the most part because they're not hard wearing garments. You're not constantly rubbing friction. Like socks are probably the most hard wearing garment that you would make with yarn. And so you need a yarn that has much more strength, which has included nylon or included, um, you know, some other 
synthetic fiber that's going to help strengthen the the um the general strength of your garment it's going to make it much stronger so that is the simple base the next base that i have is my everyday base this is my standard sock yarn this is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon for strength very very soft very squishy very easy to stitch it is a four ply yarn so it's not as puffy as a two ply or bouncy as a two ply but it's very strong so after it is dyed again there is a slight bloom to the fiber but it's not as dramatic as it is for the single ply but very soft very squishy this is a 50 gram skein by the way this is 100 grams this is 100 grams this is 50 uh, but you can see here the detail of the fiber it is four ply and it's suitable for socks or shawls or scarves or hats or pretty much anything you'd like to make. It's superwash merino, so it is soft. It has soft feel, so it's very, very nice against the skin. It has suitable micron count for that. It's not too high of a micron count. So that is everyday sock. And this is my kind of staple sock yarn in my line. So the next uh, base that I offer is my sparkle base, which I only have mini skeins at the moment and I don't have any dyed already, but this is the sparkle base. You can see it twinkling here. It's so much easier to show the twinkling of the sparkle base on camera than it is like a still photograph. This is a two ply yarn. It is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and then 5% silver selena, which is the sparkling part of the fiber. So you can see here, it's very sparkly, shiny, again, super, super soft, very good against the skin. Um, it's suitable for pretty much anything. The selena, I don't know if the selena would irritate folks if you're looking to make a hat or some other garment that's directly against your skin, but to me, I don't even feel the difference. I'm very sensitive as well, so I suppose if you're more sensitive than me, you might not like, like Stelina for a hat, like the brim of a hat, but generally it's very soft. It's a two-ply yarn, so it blooms a little bit when you dye it, and it becomes much like springy, springier and bouncier. Um, and all of these yarns have really good stitch definition depending on your medium, whether you're crocheting or knitting. I mean, you've seen me stitch with a lot of the, the fibers, actually. I mean, I'm crocheting with the simple DK and it has a lovely stitch definition. I love the way the stitches look with the single ply. <clears throat> the next line that I have is the Lux line. And now again, just like the simple line, the Lux line has two bases, Lux DK and Lux Sock. And it's the same yarn, but in two different weights. So this is Lux DK. And this is what I made Cecilia's purple socks out of that I showed. Let's focus. There we go. This is simple DK. There is a slight bloom that happens with this yarn again after it's dyed. It's very squishy, extremely soft. And because it's cashmere, you can use it for socks, but you have to know that cashmere does have a halo. I don't know if you can see this halo here. Here it is, right here. There's a halo that happens when you use cashmere yarn. If you don't like a halo, then you might not like this, but it is extremely soft. <laughs> it is my favorite yarn. I want to make all the hats and all of the scarves and everything out of this. Um, but this is the DK weight and then this is the sock weight. So it's just a difference in the diameter of the yarn. So they're both four ply. It's an 80-10-10 merino, superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon. So 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon for strength. So you can use this for socks. But again, you're going to get a halo on your yarn. And it's... Um, it's a bit softer because there's 80% merino and only 20% nylon. So it's not as hard wearing as the everyday sock, but it's still lovely and it's still suitable for socks. Um, then the last 
base that I have that I don't offer as a dye to order that I've only recently started dyeing is the Yak Sock base. This is a 70% superwash merino, 20% 70, 20, 10. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen. 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, and 10% nylon. It's also a four ply yarn. I enjoy four ply yarns um, because of the strength of them, and I enjoy the stitch definition. But this is again bare yarn. It does bloom slightly when it is dyed, but it's not a ton of blooming. Again, it's probably akin to the everyday sock. It's a similar ply, similar fiber content. Um, I, again, very, very soft, suitable for against the skin. <clears throat> it's a gray base, so any colorway that I dye on this is going to have a more muted tone. So you've seen me put up the rainbow set, which I can put some pictures, I suppose, if I'm in the mood to edit. Uh, the rainbow set, which was done with a bare skein and then some mini skeins dyed over the bare yarn, so Roy G. Biv. Um, I did the Pygmy Puff colorway, <clears throat> which was this base, but it was a fluorescent pink that went over, a fluorescent purple that went over it and it gave it this lovely muted tone. So this is one that I'll be experimenting with. So that went in order from least expensive to most expensive. Now, as, in terms of weight, I only carry fingering weight and DK weight. I have one, two, three, four, five fingering weight yarns. So simple, simple sock, everyday sock, sparkle sock, luck sock, and yak sock. Those are my fingering weight yarns. I think that's a good variety of yarn, different fiber content, different preparation. You know, this is not a high twist. These are all suitable for socks, um, all different price points. So I have the bases covered there in terms of how I feel about my shop and what I carry. And then the only other weight that I carry is DK weight and I carry the Simple DK and then the Lux DK. Now, I think that both of these are a borderline, I feel like they're borderline worsted. They're a heavier DK to a light worsted after they're dyed. Um, I feel like I can kind of get away with using these in patterns that call for a worsted weight. Um, mostly because being a crocheter and working with craft store yarns, pretty much everything is worsted weight and they all vary in, in heaviness. So if you take a picture of all the different craft store yarns that claim to be worsted weight, it is, it is a spectrum of thick to thin. So <clears throat> the thing that I feel like I'm missing is a nylon blend, so an everyday worsted where, wow, it's bright oh an everyday worsted so carrying there we go this base in a worsted weight perhaps and then a bulky weight i enjoy single ply bulky weight but i worry if it's 100 percent merino it might be too soft so i would worry about where but i think the supplier i have that i use for my yarn carries a bulky weight yarn that does have nylon in it so I'm thinking that I might add those things to the shop. If there are weights that you're interested in, you know, you can always let me know below. Contact me on Ravelry, Instagram, Etsy. If you're looking to find or see different, excuse me, different weights of yarn in my shop. But so far, I feel like I have most everything covered. And I do, I do sell a lot of fingering weight yarn because I dye a lot of sock yarn and a lot of sock knitters are really enjoying the everyday sock and the MCN. So, and then I have a cult following for the single ply, which once once I got back in, I had like a lot of messages, maybe 10 or 15 messages, like PM saying like, oh my God, are you gonna put that live yet? I need that yarn. So <clears throat> hopefully things keep going in the right direction. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking of expansion or carrying more bases is that I would like to see a worsted like a proper worsted or Aran weight, and then a bulky weight um, <clears throat> yarn. Excuse me, I keep coughing. Ugh, how rude, Kayleen. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that those are the bases that I carry. I hope that was informative for you. If you have questions for me, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm always happy to answer those questions for you. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else. Shop update will be Saturday at 1 p.m., I will have all these colors that I showed you available 
for the update with the exception possibly of this peach color only because I don't know how much I'm going to use for this blanket that I'm stitching so I will have two skeins of Slytherin Common Room two skeins of Fox Rising two skeins of Molly Weasley I have six skeins of Overcast on Simple DK I'll have two skeins of the uh, Harbor Storm colorway on Everyday Sock. I will have two skeins of each of these. So this is the original color that's a little more green. This is the recreation which is slightly bluer. Let's focus. Don't focus my face. So you can see this is slightly green and this is slightly not green. I hope it's coming across. So I'll have two of these and two of these. This is what will be in the shop forever. This was a one-off color. I have one of these still available. This is the restricted section. Pretty purple variegated skein. Quite lovely. And I think that's all I'm going to have. I'm not going to have any time to dye any more yarn today to go in. But if you'd like to see a certain color or a color I haven't dyed in a while as a ready to ship kind of thing that goes up in the shop update then leave me a comment below send me a message on Instagram or Etsy and I'm happy to dye up a bunch to put into a shop update um, I do get a lot of requests for never say die I get a lot of requests for flowers for Dobby so those might be coming in next week's shop bases just because there's something that always gets requested as a custom dye so uh, I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. Uh, it is noon time, which is, it might be a record for me finishing this within an hour. Um, I hope that you have a lovely weekend, that you enjoy the start of November here. Uh, Christmas is already upon us, people. <laughs> I've seen so much in the stores already that's geared toward Christmas, so I hope you're getting your Christmas knitting done or Christmas crochet done. Um, <clears throat> and if you have questions, just feel free to contact me. And if you like this, Give it a thumbs up if you've made it this far in the video. Wonderful. I hope you enjoyed the whole thing. Um, and if you'd like to see more, please don't forget to subscribe. You can always hit the button down below or somewhere on the video if you're watching this on Ravelry. Um, <clears throat> that way you know when I've uploaded a new video. I am trying to put together some more tutorials. I did put up a tutorial for the broomstick lace. Uh, I'll put a link to it on the, the little corner here. There's a little eye that shows up in the corner. <clears throat> to that uh, I put it up in my demonstrations playlist for broomstick lace which is a crochet technique because I've seen it everywhere this week uh, I've seen so many uh, articles about broomstick lace so I thought I would put up a small tutorial for it and um, if there are tutorials you want to see if there's you know techniques that you want me to show I'm happy to do so and I will see you guys next week when I record my next podcast so I will talk to you soon have a lovely weekend and I'll catch you later Bye.